in this faith space that I'm in where mm. mental health is not really a topic or really understood, um, when you speak about, you know, your mental health, your mental wellness, your emotions, it's like you're an immature Christian yeah. who... <laughs> who, who, who's very far from Hello. God, you know. So yes. those are the challenges that I then experienced. The thought we are suicide. Mm -hmm. Like what? What is happening, Moena, mm -hmm. in your mind? Sure. Um, I think when the thoughts came, mostly it was about nobody wants me here. Ooh. I think that lack of love, because at the end of the day, love is the reason why people want to live. Love yes. is the reason why people want to be in relationships. Love is the reason why people want to exist on Ooh. earth. Hmm. You know, so if you don't have that element and you don't know it, you just hear about it. Mm -hmm. You just see it from afar, but you don't personally know it. It makes you feel like maybe I just don't belong here because mm. nobody has ever expressed that sort of love to me. You know, as someone... Oil and Corillena has been through the same in terms mm -hmm. of when you spoke about the war. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got this facade thing mm. that, you know what, Zonje, and you're just going. Yeah. And then when you come back, yeah. you you know, deep in your thoughts, mm -hmm. you're going through a lot of things. How old were, were you when this thing started? I was 12. Now you are 24, right? Did you ever think of, let's say, mommy and dad, let's sit and talk about this. This is what I'm going through. Yeah. What happened? I, like I said, I've always been bold. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's hard with our parents, eh? It is difficult. <laughs> it is difficult. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't think it was difficult because there was a, a, a pre relationship. Let me, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. see, things were, my mom and I were very close. There was a time yes. when we were close. However, this transition that happened then change the dynamic of our relationship. But at that time, it did not dawn to me that, oh, something happened and it kind of changes how I then relate to this person. Mm. Only until that moment when I set them down and I said, listen, this is how I'm feeling because of this and this and True. this. And the reaction mm. I got was, go to your room. Yet another episode of the Dawning Experience with Chami Moroke Mkhaezu Bona. It's a funny where we celebrate our young people who are doing amazing things. And and she's doing quite a lot of things. And so I know you'll be interested in her story. But YouTube, it's Dawning Experience with Chami Moroke. And do not forget Instagram at Dawning Experience. Hi, my darling. Hi, Chima. Thank you so much How? for the warm welcome. Oh, now so young and <laughs> when I was on Tosa Dingata. You're good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Avari, <laughs> feel at home. Ah, man. It's an That's honor and a privilege. Yeah. Really appreciate you, it. You know, with Doning, I love how really this thing, the icebreaker. How we get this whole game on you. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um... I always find it difficult answering that question. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> it's such a broad, yeah. it sounds simple, but it's like... I won't get to myself. I hope I'm myself. Yeah, without <laughs> having to be like, I'm a student, yeah. I'm a businesswoman. True. You know, it's a very difficult one. But mm -hmm. in a nutshell, um, I grew up in the south of Johannesburg, uh, yes. born and bred in the south of Johannesburg. Oh. Um, I am a very sweet, mm -hmm. kind Bubbly sometimes, yeah. depending on the mang, you know. I'm very brave and courageous, yes. and I believe in myself. Lovely. I'm one person that Lovely. believes that I can do anything that I put True. my mind to. So just to define and kind of put myself out there, that's mm. how I'll define myself. So, you know, uh, do you have siblings? Yes, mm -hmm. so I grew up with my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. um, we are blended family. Yeah. So it's my mom and stepdad. Mm -hmm. um, we have a sibling from my mom. Mm -hmm. And then from my stepdad, I have another sibling. <laughs> nice. And then from my biological dad, I have siblings. Well, not the bonus. <laughs> no! <laughs> the bonus siblings. But look at you like that. Guys, I grow older, they like demand. And I'm like, 
no, ma'am. No, mm-hmm. I get you because not the last born. So oh. get out of that thing for the button. Look at me, but Ish. as you grow, yeah, it can't get some Yeah, it, it does it. I can't wait. I'm telling you, I really can't wait. I'm telling. But it's, I mean, there's beauty in it. It's just that there's also this firstborn pressure mm-hmm. that you like setting the mark and the example. Mm. I wouldn't say I feel it much, mm-hmm. but there are times where I'm just like, I can't afford to mess up because I have siblings <laughs> who are coming <laughs> up to me. You know, but I don't. I choose not to. L- live with that pressure. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, off camera, Nikki was like, it's like Omozwana. Because <laughs> earlier like on, I was Nikki was the Zululu, and I said, Nikki was the one. I'm like, okay, I need to ask her. Do you have it? Omozwana. Omozwana. It's just that people sometimes confuse me mm. uh, with uh, being colored. Uh, okay. Just, it's a, it's a weird story last week. I was in the taxi mm-hmm. and this colored lady just spoke Afrikaans with me for like a good Ooh, five minutes. Chop. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I can't understand anything that yeah. you were saying. So I do get that, but I, I identify mm-hmm. as Tuana. Yes. No, I'm It's I don't like you guys, but you know, the Tuana vibe. So cute. Um, in terms of studies, what are you studying? I'm studying community development through mm-hmm. UNISA. Okay, 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 my tricky what you said about this. Why? Why community oh my development? Goodness. It was not even my first choice. Uh-huh. I do not even know about community development in metric. So right. grade 11. So my childhood, I grew up wanting to be a teacher because really? I have this passion mm-hmm. for teaching. And then it just changed. I was like, mm-hmm. the more I grew and I'm like, oh no, it I happens. ain't about to be like dealing it with, happens. you know? Mm-hmm. And then my passion for psychology grew due to my own mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Then high school, I knew that I wanted to be a psychologist. Okay. Um, I also wanted to link it to my faith because mm-hmm. I am Christian and I nice. feel like the aspect of the human soul okay. was not delved into a lot and when I had my own mental challenges, Ish. it was always pray about it. But the more I prayed, the more nothing happened. Ooh. So I thought there should be something and more to it. Mm. That's why I then decided to study psychology to understand the human mind, you know, mm. and how then it links to our spiritual being. So I studied through SACAP the first year, mm-hmm. but because it's a private institution, my Ish. parents were like, we can't afford to hey, take Hey, it's you, a lot. I know. You know? Yeah. And I got rejected at your UJs, as your free, um, all these universities. Mm-hmm. And I then decided to start working at Sanka okay. as a substance abuse coach. Wow. So there, that's when I knew, started knowing about community development because my manager was a community developer. Mm. So when I saw the work that he did, and I'm like, this was quite interesting. It's really not far-fetched from my passion of being in the community and helping people, Mm. you know? Um, So after working at Sanka and taking, I remember I stopped working. Mm. I then had to do some self-introspection and my mom kept on saying, you can't be at home and not do anything. As much as I knew that psychology is what I wanted, Mm. but I couldn't do it then. So then I was like, you know what? Let me just try this community development. And that's how it came about. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, you touched on something, mental health challenges or issues. Yeah. Let's go through that. No, it's Alan. Hey, man, it's, it's quite a sensitive one. Mm-hmm. I am going to not talk about a few things. I hope my story will make sense, though. Yeah. Um, so being in a blended family is challenging mm-hmm. on its own. It comes with its own challenges. And I think it's challenges that a lot of people don't want to talk about, especially if you're in the Christian space, mm-hmm. whereby it's like, um, it's God's plan. So yeah. this is how it, how it you is. know? And as much as it's God's plan, but sometimes we as human beings, the way we maneuver, the way we transition into certain things, mm-hmm. it's not the best of ways. Yes. So there was this major transition that happened in my life mm-hmm. and it left me just feeling lost. Oh, and yeah. there was a bit of tension between my parents and I mm. and a bit of, you know, unkind words spoken here and there, a bit of rejection here and there. And yeah, it kind of pushed me aside in a mm-hmm. way and kind of shut me out. So I then started dealing with a, a lot of suicidal thoughts. I attempted suicide a couple of times. This was grade eight, grade nine, grade 10. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up very depressed, did not want to live. So I would say my high school years were just purely survival. Because mm-hmm. home was not so great for me. Um, mm-hmm. School, school, I didn't have much friends. 
So I was, I knew people, but I wouldn't say I had friends because nobody knew what I was going through. Yeah. So I was walking around with this mask and oh. this wall and I just did not want anybody to get close to me because I didn't know if I could trust anyone mm. with my life like that. Yeah. So that's how I guess the mental health challenges came about. You know, as you're speaking about suicide, I know it was longer deeper, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. The thought, oh, yeah, suicide, mm-hmm. like what, what is happening mm-hmm. in your mind? Sure. Um, I think when the thoughts came, mostly it was about nobody wants me here. Ooh. I think that lack of love. Because at the end of the day, love is the reason why people want to live. Love is the reason why people want to be in relationships. Love is the reason why people want to exist on earth. Hmm. You know, so if you don't have that element and you don't know it, you just hear about it. Mm -hmm. You just see it from afar, but you don't personally know it. It makes you feel like maybe I just don't belong here. Because mm. nobody has ever expressed that sort of love to me. So a lot of times when the suicidal ideations came was simply because I feel felt like nobody wants me here. And because I also didn't have anybody to run to at that time, yeah, yeah. Um, it was only me and battling with those thoughts. By God's grace, I had established a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw him help me through a lot of things, you know. Um, however... Not however, but, okay, however. (laughs) (laughs) That human connection is still Mm. important. As much as God was there for me, um, I think that human connection as well would have helped me a lot, you know. Um, But by God's grace, I managed to get through that difficult time. You know, as someone, Oil and Choriliana has been through the same in terms Mm -hmm. of when you spoke about the war. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got this facade thing Mm. that, you know what, Zonje, and you just, going yeah and then when you come back yeah. you you know deep in your thoughts mm-hmm. going through a lot of things how old were, were you when this thing started i was 12 now you are 24 right did you ever think of let's say mommy and dad let's sit and talk about this this is what i'm going through yeah what happened I, like I said, I've always been bold. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's hard with our parents, eh? It is difficult. <laughs> it is difficult. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't think it was difficult because there was a a, a pre relationship. Let me, let me put it that way. Mm-hmm. Uti. Things were, my mom and I were very close. There was a nice. time when we were close. However, this transition that happened then changed the dynamic of our relationship. But at that time, it did not dawn to me that, oh, something happened and it kind of changes how I then relate to this person. Mm. Only until that moment when I sat them down and I said, listen, this is how I'm feeling because of this and this and this. And the reaction I got was, go to your room. We don't have time for this, you know? And I think that for me was m- that that marking point of me completely shutting myself out. Mm. So, Ish. yeah. You know, you're reminding me of, I know it, it's a joke how we want to go social yeah. media. Someone was saying, by uh, uh, psychiatric or go social work. Yeah, yeah, the trauma jokes. Yes. <laughs> and then, have a feature con tongue. Mama's like, yeah, la mozza va trauma. I don't like your abuse. You need to la house a little trauma. Yeah. Mango, you kill a banana con And then now, through that, you shut mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. You do. You do. I think the lack of emotional intelligence mm-hmm. and the lack of people being emotionally aware. Yeah. Like I said, we, a lot of people walk in the world with just, as long as I have my mind under control, as long as I have my flesh under control, my emotions are just a distraction. Mm-hmm. And I feel like your emotions play such a huge role Ooh. in just you being human and you relating yeah. to other people. And because coming from a faith perspective, yeah. you taught you don't do things based on emotions. <laughs> and I'm great up and I'm like I'm overcome with emotions you know how do I deal with this Mm. without suppressing but we taught to suppress and not understand hence the reaction I got from my parents and as I grow old I start to understand that as much as it hurts I understand that they lack that emotional awareness because they themselves had to suppress a lot of things and as much as they suppress them thinking that 
um, it doesn't affect me, but indirectly it popped up. It popped mm. up in how you related to me. It popped up in how you raised me, how you spoke to yeah. me. You know, as much as you're thinking it's the past, whatever I went through as my as as a parent doesn't affect me now. Mm. But unfortunately, reality reality is it does affect you. You know, I'm thinking of the if there's an another kill, kill or not get ready to go to your room. <laughs> yeah. Another kill, Otro ya go home when you're high and then starts cutting herself. Mm-hmm. Well, when how a trauma yeah. ill yet um, yeah. to that individual. Yeah. By God's grace, I'm I, I have low tolerance for physical pain. I once mm. tried cutting myself, but it didn't go those, down those so do well. Have. You know, mm. but I think for me, my coping mechanism was definitely isolation. Yeah. And it's not I, good. Isolated. It's not. Because uh, isolating yourself is where the devil has you the most. That's it's where he power. lies. And he's like, dude, this is exactly where I want you. Mm. And I think another coping mechanism was uh, I entertained unnecessary relationships in terms of romantic relationships. Mm-hmm. So I started seeking for the love, the validation, oh, the affirmation from mm-hmm. guys. And for me, I always say it's by God's grace that... Um, I I did not end up falling pregnant or having mm. a child with the wrong yeah. person or having unnecessary soul ties. But as as I look back, I'm just like, man, that was very unnecessary. Yeah. Why did Why? I go to that person? <laughs> you know. But I also have that grace to say I needed an escape from the pain, and my only escape was relationships. I didn't want alcohol. I had no desire for drugs. I just needed some human only, yeah. connection. And the only human connection I could find was in a guy. Because mm. we can say, why didn't you go to girls? But hey. Don't understand <laughs> what I'm going through. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, since only mothers in your community development and we incorporating mental health. Mm-hmm. So through research, I get mental health includes our emotions, mm-hmm. psychologically and social well-being. Yeah. So how do you incorporate your community development into the mental health? Yeah. What are you doing? Sure. Um, mental health is always a tricky one to bring into communities that are disadvantaged yep. and marginalized because they're hungry, they don't mm. have jobs, they don't have, you know, the, 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 the social needs, the basic needs like your water, your electricity, mm. and you get them be like, take care of your mental health. Yeah. Already their mental health is non-existent at that point because exactly. they lack the basics of needs. Mm. You know, so I think when tackling issues of mental health and community development, the most important thing is trying to figure out how do we tackle your basic needs first? Yes. You know, when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, before you get to your self-actualization, which mm. is like your mental health and living out your purpose and living and taking care of yourself, it's always the basic of needs that yeah. need to be met first you know um however mental health and community development development is all about your empowerment development is all about your overall well-being making sure that the person develops evolves and Mm. and is is how do i put it makes tangible impact in their community makes tangible impact in their families you know so that's all also what mental health is about you know put making sure that you are mentally stable or mentally well so that you may continuously empower yourself and evolve into who you need to be yes. because if you're mentally unwell there's certain elements of your life that you'll not or certain aspects rather that you'll not be able to tap into mm-hmm. because of that force that's kind of pulling you back you know yeah so yeah you know, I work at Moslo's hierarchy. I'm like, yeah, I should get it. I'm like, high school, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm doing keep on. It's, it's the psychology of <laughs> me speaking. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I, I noticed, Hapa, you are a, a coordinator, a field coordinator. Is it also incorporated in this no, development thing? Is it? No, no, no. So that's just what I do mm. as a, an employer. Yes. Employee. Employee. Yes, sorry. <laughs> are we getting there? Soon I'll be an employer. I love it for me. Yes, girl. <laughs> um, as an employee. So I work uh, for a market research company mm. um, as a field coordinator. Yeah. So we focus on research on different products, different brands. Um, different organizations. That's basically what I do as a full time oh, no, corporate to job. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it actually, yes. I I actually realized how it links with community development because mm. 
the research aspect of it as a community developer research is quite important especially if you go True. into different communities so learning the different research methodologies um how do you engage with certain people um how do you get to a community and find out what do they need what yeah. is the oh. issue you know so it's a blessing that I'm able to gain that knowledge that to the time I then step into being a community developer, I have the necessary you tools. Know. So it just links so perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I can tell you back to the mental health. Mm-hmm. I can you a mental health advocate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's all these challenges. Of course. Let's speak about that. Hey, Doning Experience is sponsored by Dreamstream. If you'd like to support us directly and gain ad-free version of our episodes, click on the link below. Uh, okay, so do you want to speak about my personal challenges? Let's start or with external? your personal, so that when we get into external, you know, mm-hmm. the, yeah, the breakthrough. Hey, I think personal challenges is that as someone who advocates for mental health, I sometimes don't know how to get myself out of a dark space. Yo. It's very easy for me to encourage someone else. It's very easy for me to advise someone else. But yes. sometimes taking that advice for myself, it it becomes a bit challenging. Um, secondly, in the faith space that I'm in, where mm. mental health is not really a topic or really understood, um, when you speak about, you know, your mental health, your mental wellness, your emotions, it's like you're an immature Christian yeah. who, 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 who's <laughs> very far from God, <laughs> you know? So yes. those are the challenges that I then experienced. But back then, it really used to, like, get to me. And mm. I used to feel like some failure. But the more I grow and the more I start to understand my emotions and I start to understand the Bible, you know, I start to see that my emotions are actually created by God. And if I don't feel okay, it is then an invitation for me to figure out why. You know, it's then an invitation for me to bring it to God and be like, I'm feeling this way. Yeah. Help me to understand. Because yeah. some feelings are valid. Some feelings, it's God prompting you to go into a certain direction. Mm. God doesn't only speak through signs and wonders and True. this voice. He sometimes speaks through your own emotions, yes. you know. So having that emotional awareness for me is actually quite important, yeah. you know. And there's also challenges, obviously, when it comes to, I guess, our... Um, our black society yes. as well. Hey. Ish, yeah, hey, you yeah. know, where because of our history, mm-hmm. um, the emotional awareness is still not there, like I still mm. said. Even when you want to bring forth certain things to your parents or your mm. great great parents or your grandparents, it's it's it's, it's a very difficult. tricky topic, you know? And there's there's no I don't know, there's there's no manual to mm. it. You just have to do see how they react and then build boundaries from there you know um, exactly yeah. exactly so just that emotional intelligence emotional awareness yeah. in our black societies is a lack and understandably so but unfortunately it's not the way to live because mm. right now it seems like we are just all surviving just trying to get through life yes. and you're not living you know are you really happy do you really have joy do you really have peace or do you have to go to a bottle store every day after yeah. work do you have to pop pills just so that you can sleep mm. you know why aren't we then trying to find a way for you to live a peaceful and oh. joyful life why don't you try and find a mm. way for you to live a purpose-filled life you know so i think bringing that emotional awareness and emotional intelligence could break so many generational cycles, especially this whole thing of you don't communicate about certain things. You don't come to your parents about certain yes. things. Um, I Some of those things, I don't, I, as long as they're not in my Bible, hey, I, I just feel like yes. they're just cultural yes. and it's not even God's yeah. standard. You know, knowing the Bible does it say you can't bring certain issues to your Do parents you. and it's dishonoring. Sure. No, um, God is a God of religion relationships mm. god is a god of reciprocity you know i'm oh, sorry to be preaching oh, preach, but girl. we don't mind when god says children <laughs> honor your parents 
you know, for this is the first commandment with a promise. He then mm. says, parents, do not dishearten your children, Indeed. for they will be discouraged. Indeed. So there's that reciprocity to mm. say, as much as I've called the children to honor, yeah. I've also called you to make sure that you 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 take care of that child mm. and, and you watch how how you talk to them and you build a relationship yes. with them. You know, it's more than just you putting food on the table and taking them to school, mm. you know, which I also I'm not a parent myself. Myself. I know people think you don't even have a child. What are you talking but about? But I feel like you you are learning a parent. Yeah. This yeah. is what you're going to work on. Definitely, mm. definitely. But you know, when you talk from a perspective where you have not even reached, yeah. people are like, go sit oh, down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. Just honey. sit down. You know, but I think the more I grow, the more I see that life is about relationships. Mm. As much as we want to incorporate the money, the materials, mm. but at the end of the day, if the relationships in your life are not working out, you are going to live a very miserable life. That's that's the truth. Oh. You know, as we're touching on mental health, we know how sensitive it is. Yeah. I want us to get into the schools. Mm-hmm. You know, could you go along? There's bullying. There's yeah. quite a lot of things. Do you ever go to schools mm-hmm. and speak to them? Because there's a lot of them who go yeah. through a lot. Yeah. I remember with me, I went through. I wouldn't say it was a physical, but it was that emotional bullying of mm-hmm. my height and oh, all of that. Yeah. You know how it is yeah. with the kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying, Kore, you would go home and just shut. Mm-hmm. I would do that. Mm-hmm. But not every child or oh, yeah. that thing. Yeah. There's someone who's going to be like, you know, I want to kill myself because yeah. of this bullying. Yeah. yeah. How do you tackle this thing? How do you encourage them? Sure. Um, so I've done quite a few school campaigns about bullying. And at the end of the day, as much as we want to say children will always be children, you know, um, but it always goes back to home. Oh. It really always goes back to home yes. because some children are just bringing what they get from home. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I've learned that the bullies are the ones that actually need more help. True. They need more help because they are imposing whatever insecurity insecurity rather just so mm. that they can feel better about themselves just so that they can have that sense of power and control over something because yeah. they might not have that at work mm. i mean at home rather you know so i think the importance of constantly building that the child's self esteem mm. building the child's identity you know correcting and i also think as much as teachers have a lot of work to do you know um but also trying to just correct certain behaviors exactly. to say you don't talk to other children like, like that. that you know you don't treat other children like that um so it's it's a really sensitive topic mm. because it stems deep one motivational talk at school will probably only change one percent you know yeah. but some need therapy some need someone to walk this journey with them because some come from homes where it's really not nice you know and school is the only way where they can just act out mm. you know um so those bullies actually need some form of care some form of love um but at the same time the ones that are actually receptive of that also need some form of support mm. because Sometimes you'll get home and they'll be like, ukasi, ukasi so you hey, must go back yes. and fight. Why, and what? some of us are sweet. We don't even know how to fight. And it's not going to solve anything. It's not going to solve mm. anything. You're just going to harm yourself further in mm. the process. You know? So for me, I wish schools can invest more in counseling. Mm. You know, invest more in getting counselors. Therapy is expensive. But is. honestly, I feel like it's something that needs to be made available, especially mm. in schools. Um, And now it's worse. I think, when you look back now there's like stabbings now there's There's like killings and you just like this is a level of anger that Mm. stems very deep you know it could be spiritual it could be emotional only god knows Mm. but there's just something that is off that really needs immediate attention imagine a student at a teacher imagine imagine like yeah man it's it's it's, I, I don't even know what you would say about it. <laughs> you know, and you know, there's the other thing I noticed, Gil. Um, I think it was 2020 during COVID. Yeah. I was a, a school brigade. Mm-hmm. So obviously you're seeing these kids go primary mm-hmm. school. There was this other one, the, the boy or disabled. 
Okay. So, okay, I'm not going to school. 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 You know that thing. Mm-hmm. But this one, okay, I'm not going to school. And so, and they were mocking this child. Mm-hmm. Now, as you're saying that, Jorge, live at Zwadi. Turn to Blele Ban, Jorge. You don't do that. Just because yeah. on mm-hmm. Otama, you don't. Mm-hmm. Be sensitive when yeah. it comes to certain, yeah. certain things. Because mental health, guys, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. I mean, your mental health is what shapes who you are. Mm-hmm. And if you're not okay, then who you are is not okay. You know, and I think when it comes to disability, it's not something that you hear a lot about it. You know, there's mm-hmm. not much awareness around it. And I think maybe it is time for us to raise awareness on it to say as much as this person might be differently abled, it does not mean they're not human. It does not mean they are not yeah. like you. And it does not mean they don't feel the things that you feel. Mm. So I think also just that element of education in, in, in high school and primary. Um, I mean, there's life orientation, for goodness sake. Those are the topics you that know? we could be mm. incorporating in our syllabus. You know, just human decency. Yeah. Just basic human decency. Because I feel like we're really moving away from human decency. Mm. We are living in the society where it's just all about me, what I want, what I feel, and we have no regard for the next person. Ooh, this is this is intense. <laughs> How do you now navigate uh, uh, sensitive topics, you mm-hmm. know, and all these conversations surrounding mental health? Ah, uh, man. How do I navigate... It's, it's always a challenge, I think, navigating sensitive topics around mental health because people always have their own different opinions. Um, but I think the one thing that I always tell someone is that if you don't understand something, keep your opinion to yourself. Especially you. if you are around someone who's battling with their mental health, mm. um, probably on medication or going to a psychiatrist. Don't try and solve. Don't try and be the one to like find a solution to the problem if mm. you are not a professional or educated around that area. Rather, just be present. Just be present and show them love. Yes, it's going to be draining mm. because as people, there's so much we can take. But I'd rather have you there quiet than you talk oh, about yes. something that you you know nothing about, mm. you know? Um, so that's how I choose to navigate certain mm. sensitive topics. Even myself, when someone comes to me and says, this is what I'm dealing with, and I don't know what to do, I just keep quiet. And by God's grace, I might have certain, you know, I might be able to refer that person yes. to, to certain people, you know? And that's my advice to people that probably living with someone that is struggling with their mm. mental health is that try and find people, try and find yes. organizations that can offer help to that person. Let that person who is experienced, who is qualified to mm. deal with them rather than you saying things that are just going to drive them further away. True. Mm-hmm. But I still support the thing that you said earlier on in terms of schools. Mm-hmm. I'm really a social worker. Yeah, definitely. School. Definitely. We do need that. We honestly need that. And I think it's, it's something that South Africa needs to mm. look into especially with the social issues that are now happening just it's in school. It is a lot mm-hmm. and we can't just turn a blind side to it. Look at it's the tertiary students. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll find that this person Haji allowance higher game mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what is happening mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, there's quite a lot of things that there's are happening there's just quite a lot of things mm-hmm. that are happening and at the end of the day we all need help mm-hmm. at the end of the day we all need people to help us and assist us in this journey that we are mm-hmm. in you know and living life in isolation living oh. life alone that's not life it isn't that's not life I love how on the work of God, God. <laughs> now I want to take you to Kiwu Hore. Kiwu must speak since the Hare. I'm going through a lot. Yeah. What's that scripture that you run to? Oh, that scripture that I run to is in Philippians. I'm not good with verses, but it talks about <laughs> me the same. As long as I know how to <laughs> yeah, say it. Like that's all that matters. There's too yeah. many verses in the Bible I mean, for me to know all of them, child. Exactly. You know? um, so it's Philippians um, where it talks about the peace of God that surpasses all, all understanding. understanding. God's mm-hmm. my mind and my heart in Christ Jesus. As an overthinker, and as one who hey. feels very deeply, yeah. sometimes I get so trapped in my thoughts and my emotions mm. that I'm unable to find a way out. And the only scripture I can say out loud until the storm has passed is that scripture. It is. It, it just always does wonders for me. And it works. It does work. It does work. You even pray about it. You read 
and then you pray on it. I mean, there's nothing that beats peace, mm. honestly. I think the more I grow, as I work and the money comes in and I'm just like, hey. it's going to go. It's not like it's going to be here forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need some peace. I need some joy. I need something to keep <laughs> exactly. me going, exactly. you know. So it's definitely my go-to scripture. Mm. Now, there's something I saw on your bio. I'm looking at the body. <laughs> and now I saw oh, modeling and all Ish. that. Ish. What's going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. So Ish, the modeling is a funny story, hey? Because mm. I always get, I think you've been a pageant girl since you're young. And I'm like, girl, mm. sit down. I'm yeah. going to start it now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Mm. Like pageants. I My first pageant was Miss Gauteng. In 2021, that's when I joined the pageant. And I got crowned second princess in 2022. Yeah. That was God's <laughs> grace. But I never had a desire to join pageants. Growing up, I just wanted to be a commercial model. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to be on a billboard, your hey, adverts. I, I even wanted to say, I don't want to commercial. I don't know, what's all I <laughs> So I just, that's what yeah. I wanted. Mm -hmm. But 2021, I just had this desire to say, let me, let's enter and see. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, I got crowned second princess. And now I entered for, for Miss Josie. It's also a... Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what happens. But I think what I love about pageants is that as, as a girl child, it, it literally creates that environment for me to discover myself yes. without having to think about the next person. Because I think reality of being a girl child is that you were raised to think about the next person and not yourself because it's deemed selfish. Mm -hmm. So being in pageants, it's like I focus on me, my growth, my development, pouring into my cup so that when I go into the world, I can pour back into people. You know, it's it's very difficult to serve with an empty yeah, cup, yeah. you know. Um, and I think pageants for me as well is the only space whereby I'm just not a pretty girl. I'm tired of people just, the beauty with brain statement, uh -uh, anybody please, that knows out. me <laughs> knows that baby girl, we have moved from yes. there. Why is the insinuation that because someone is beautiful, they are stupid? Why are we insinuating Why? that? You know, so pageants have changed as much as people still want to call it beauty pageants but pageants have changed they force mm. you to think about who you are why are you here what is your purpose what do you want to do for people around you your community True. you know they push you that's mm -hmm. what i like they, they they push you to evolve it's like that shaking ground to say if you've been stagnant yeah. and you need to move go to pageants and trust me it's not even about how cute you look yeah we have passed that right now it's about who you are, what do you know, Ooh. what do you represent, and are you able to step into the room and present yourself well? So, how are you introvert? Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> You're working said, with people. Uh, Look, you do, but I don't consider know. myself an introvert. No, but you're doing community <laughs> development. So, or oh, one hour, so you're stepping out yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah. So, if I can say, oh, it does. It. it does. But even if you're an introvert, I think that there's. Every introvert has that that side mm. of them, that bold side of them, you know. And if you want to step out of it, then you'll have to step into places that push you yes, to actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now you know, with pageant, what I love, Yanong incorporates what you're doing, mm -hmm. community. Yeah, you're working with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about uh, Miss Essay, so, hey, uh, the pressure. I mean, we saw them. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> Do you see I yourself don't know. doing Thing it? Is, I don't know. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I people always say that, but with me, pageants has always been. If I feel like entering, I enter. Yeah. It has never been a, on my vision board. So if one day I just wake up and I'm like, we are entering from the start one day. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see you one day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think with my South Africa, maybe there's just a lot of insecurity still holding me back that I feel like I just need to address these few things. In Jesus' name, we're yeah. blocking them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I receive. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Let's see. So, where to from here? What can we expect from Gil? Who? Lord. <laughs> Lord, release. <laughs> oh, way too from here. Yeah. Um, so the goal right now is to is to complete my studies. Mm -hmm. And then after completing my studies is to venture into working as a community developer. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going back into psychology. 
I make I, I just want to finish that degree. Mm-hmm. Um which obviously is a master's in in neuropsychology, so studying the brain and how it affects the body. Ooh. And um maybe my South Africa I, I mean, don't know. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> recently, I've also had this desire to start an NGO. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not really something I've been thinking much about. It's just there. So maybe at some point in my life, I'll and explore. Look into it because you speaking about mental that. health. You've been through this thing. Yeah. You go there with your experiences. You go there as a future psychologist. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. I don't know how to answer that question because yeah. I feel like my life has just always been unfolding. Mm-hmm. I'm, it, it, I never go according to a vision board, unfortunately. Yes. There's just always this tada from God and I find yes. myself in spaces. I'm like, this is not what I applied for, mm-hmm. remember, sir. But, but God says. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes these questions are a bit difficult because I have my own personal desires. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, God's will just always supersedes my own desires. Mm -hmm. yeah wow (laughs) now let's speak to a young girl who is locking herself in her room Mm -hmm. going through a lot what do you say to that young girl i want you to look at that young girl and speak to that young girl or boy actually Mm -hmm. yeah that's locking themselves in the room Mm -hmm. going through a lot Mm -hmm. also being told that go to your room Mm -hmm. you know what can you say to that i think one thing i can say is that they're not alone. Mm-hmm. They might feel alone. Um, it might look like they're alone. But reality is that there are people out there that are specially created just to be with them. Mm-hmm. And if they can just drop that wall Ooh. and just allow even just one person in who can just make that difference, who can just be that per- that companion, you know, that mm-hmm. friend that you need. Um, sometimes we don't get to experience that human connection because people don't know how to approach us, you know? So just also on your side, trying to just break those barriers, not saying for everyone, you know, but there's always, there'll always be that one person that makes you feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing I'll say is that there's more to life than what you are going through right now. Mm -hmm. And there's more to you than how you view yourself right now. Give yourself some time, give, God some time, give mm-hmm. life some time. It's it's a difficult season, but eventually you will pass there. And as you pass there, you will help others oh, also yes. pass there. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not gonna take away from the from the fact that they have to be there and it's probably a difficult space, but they don't have to do it all alone. And it's mm-hmm. not the end of the world. Now, can someone uh get in touch with you? Maybe let's say, like we're saying, going through a lot and saying mm-hmm. Who can I go to? Can they get in touch with maybe about DM and just, mm. you know, <laughs> nah, do not ask for numbers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Um, on Instagram and, and Facebook, mm-hmm. Um, Instagram is Gil Mulefe and then Facebook is Gil Hope Mulefe. Mm-hmm. So they can just DM me or message me yes. and I always respond. Please. Yeah. Pass your number or else. I block. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste I'm, time. I'm very fast there. <laughs> Q, thank you so much uh, for coming. Thank I, you. I'm hoping for a kid for really anything. For you own seeds. I always have. I always have something to say. So I don't know. I can't answer that question. Lau ka maslava ka advice si Jo Ori. Yeah. But are you good? I'm good. Thank, thank you. you so much. Mm-hmm. This was really amazing, mm-hmm. and I really appreciate you taking time and just mm-hmm. making this platform available for me yeah. and by god's grace i hope that the the people that need it mm-hmm. will hear and somehow find peace somehow find healing somehow find answers that they've been looking for and for me by god's grace i hope Jorge, in a few years to come yeah we'll be sitting here with you as a psychologist <laughs> and someone yeah. at some, you know advising each other mm-hmm. and speaking about the challenges and you know, pouring out. Because mm-hmm. I feel like this is what we need. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. to say as women. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we go yeah. through a lot, yeah. guys. Yeah. You know, we need to sit down. I need to have, to know who I've got my sister's back. Mm-hmm. You know, we need mm-hmm. to support each other. Mm, true. And true. I don't know if you've noticed, these days, 
I cannot rely on my sister. I don't know what's wrong with us. We are hating it's, each other. It's, yes, Kiyun, the it's a Chinese tricky hating one. On Kiyun. It's a tricky one. You know? Yeah. Let's be there for each other. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree on that. And hope I'll be here soon. <laughs> 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 uh, thank you so much. All right. I do hope you lend a thing or two because mental health is one sensitive issue and we need to tackle it. So please do not forget to subscribe on YouTube at Stoning Experience with Chami Moroge and get a look on Instagram. It's at Doning Experience. Guys, subscribe. Please. So please sing me. Anyway, from myself, Kimina no Kukimusebo Wadira. Thank you so much.